Welcome back everyone to our how to create an inventory series. So in the last episode, we added the ability to collect blocks in your inventory. In this episode, we're going to set up a little bit of a hotbar, which is just going to appear maybe in the bottom of our screen, maybe the top of our screen. And it's just going to show the first row of items in our inventory. So to do that, it's not too hard. It's going to take a bit of setting up. However, so I think in this episode, we're just going to do the user interface for it. And then in the next episode, we'll do the functionality for it um, because there is quite a lot to get through. Anyway, so let's get started really quick. The first thing we want to set up is in our player controller. We want to ha we have at the moment, we have a public tile class selected tile. We want to change this to public item item class. And then we just want to say selected item that's going to give us a whole bunch of errors hopefully which should appear down here yep and then at the moment we're saying check tile this 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 um what we actually want to do is so we're saying if place we have to firstly check before we do if place if the item we're holding if select item dot item type is equal to uh our item class dot item type dot block so if the select of the item we're holding is a block then if we place it or press the key to place it obviously do this and to place it we just have to say selected item dot um block do we have a block class dot tile class maybe we don't have that let's implement that really quick <laughs> I thought we did have that set up, but I guess not. Um, in our inventory slot, is it? Or item class? I think it's in our item class. Let's open that script up. And we do not have that. Yes. Okay, so let's do that really quick. Let's have a public tile class tile. And then a whoop, public tool class and tool. Just like that. Um, and then in our player controller again, we want to say selected item dot tile. There we go. That'll fix itself easily. So then we're saying if hit, remove that tile. Um, let's do that for now, but we should in our remove tile function, we should pass in a tool as well because we want to be able to choose which tools break which tiles, for example. Um, and we'll set that up probably in the next episode, if not this one. Again, today we're just going to set up some of the basic functionality. And then in the next episode, we're going to get actually going with that. Anyway, um, enough said. Let's actually keep writing some code to do stuff. So that's going to do that. We do need an array, which is going to sort of hold our hotbar, I think. Um, alternatively, we could just... We do have an inventory here. So we could just get the first row of slots. Um, so I'm thinking maybe we should have a separate inventory for our hotbar but we might set that up later so i just want to get started on the user interface because the interface is quite a uh, struggle to do especially for a um hotbar so let's go in our game window just so we have a better view of things in our inventory ui we want to keep that um, but we could maybe disable that and then we want to duplicate it Control c Control v that's going to give us another object make sure that's above the event system object Click it, and then we just want to firstly rename this to maybe hot bar UI. There we go. And if we enable this now, you'll see it looks like this. That's kind of bad because we don't want it to look like that. First thing we can do is get rid of panel because that's useless. Uh, sorry, title, keep panel. Panel, though, we are going to say it so that it is pinned to our top right corner. Um, so that's the wrong button. <laughs> Alt, Shift, and then click the top right corner, you'll see your panel moves up there. So then pause X can be that. Background I might get rid of maybe. No, let's keep it, let's keep it. Um, width and height though, we do have the modifier. So width I might make about that much. Uh, so let's make this 300 maybe, uh, maybe 350. 350, yep, that looks about fine. And then height should be around 60, maybe 50. Yeah, that looks good. Um, Cool, and then we are gonna have to set up the slots for this as well. So for example, if I drag and drop a slot there, you'll see it comes up like this, which is very nice. Um, but we are gonna have to create a script which creates a whole bunch of slots, the same number as our inventory width on the top row. So 
maybe we should do that as well. Uh, in fact, maybe we don't need our panel. Let's make this opacity really low, just so we can kind of see the boundary of where our slots should stay within. And then maybe we can just get rid of that panel once our slots generate. So let's set that up really quick in our inventory script. At the moment, we have a public game object uh, inventory UI. We want to control C, control V, and this is going to be called hotbar UI. And this can stay the same because we're going to use the same inventory slot prefab. In our update inventory UI function, though, we have to now update our function, uh, update our uh, hotbar as well. So this part's going to update inventory. And then after we do that, we're going to, we want to update hotbar. So the other thing we have to do is set up UI. So we have to say here we set up the inventory. And then after we set up the inventory, we want to set up hotbar as well. So setting up hotbar is quite simple. I'm just going to literally copy that code and paste it here. We can get rid of the uh, Y loop because it's only going to happen on one axis. So that doesn't matter. Um, however, one thing we do have to do is let's just fix the indentations like that. One thing we do have to do is say, for example, UI slots here, we don't want to do that as much. We're going to have to come up with a new method to do that. Um, inventory slots X, Y, we're going to actually have to create another uh, public inventory slot array, but this can just be um, one dimensional. And we're just going to call this hotbar slots. We should come up with better interface names for this as well, but we'll worry about that later. So then we should probably create a public game object uh, array for hotbar UI slots. Now let's set up these arrays here. So for example, we're doing it here. We're saying inventory slots equals this, this, this. We can say hotbar slots equals new inventory slot array. And it's just going to say inventory width. And then we can say hotbar UI slots equals new game object array with just the inventory width here. If it wants to do work, there we go. Cool, so that's going to set up the arrays for us. That's nice and easy. Um, I might just move this underneath it just for consistency. Anyway, down here, we're still getting errors. So in fact, let's just copy this again because I removed one of the lines. We should not do that, maybe. Uh, yeah, OK, we'll just rewrite it. So here, we're going to say hotbar UI slots x and then 0 equals, sorry, just x. We don't have to pass in the second dimension equals inventory slots. That's fine. Um, and I might name this hotbar slot just like that. That's going to give us a couple of errors. Let's fix that like that. Cool. Um, and then hotbar. So this should be hotbar slots. Hotbar slots x. Get rid of y equals this. Um, and then hotbar slot dot get component vector transform local position. Um, and we're saying equals new vector to x, and then obviously y doesn't exist. So what we should do is literally get rid of this, and we'll just say offset dot y instead. Um, and in fact, we might need another offset. So let's rename this offset to uh, inventory offset. And then we'll create another public vector to hotbar offset. Uh, offset, and then we'll have to create another vector to public vector to hotbar. And in fact, we should maybe keep them the same. Yeah, we'll keep them the same because that's just going to make our user interface more consistent. Um, with that said, at the moment, we're instantiating inventory slot prefab. That's good. We want to instantiate it under our hotbar UI dot transform dot get child zero. So that's going to put it underneath our panel. Um, however, we might not want to use a panel, so we can just get rid of this bit, and then we can get rid of the second dot transform. Uh, and then that should theoretically work. Uh, this should be uh, hotbar offset, hotbar offset dot x, and then hotbar offset dot y. And that should set up our interface for us there. And then we'll just add this line after we test it. So let's just double check that our hotbar is now generating correctly. 
So let's click on our player root object. There's going to be a bunch of values we have to set up again. So you can see our inventory offset and um, was now multiple, uh, reduced or changed rather. So X, I think it was minus 40, Y was 100 or something or vice versa. I'm not 100% sure, we'll set that up again. And then drag and drop your hotbar UI there. Um, and then panel, I'm just going to make this so set active is false. So just if you click on it, you can tick this little tick here and that will choose if it's active or not. Um, with that done, we can enable our U the interface for our inventory there, save it, press play, and let's see if our inventory, sorry, our hotbar loads up. Okay, so you can see our hotbar generated, um, in, except it loaded down here, which is not very nice. We also have an error, so let's figure out why that error is appearing. Uh, if selected item dot item type equals item class dot block, right? So at the moment we don't have a um, block, so we should actually. My bad. We should say if place then if this equals that. So let's get rid of Control X that line. Let's fix up the indentation for this. Add a curly bracket there. Inside that curly bracket, put this, get rid of that, and like that. So then let's refresh this, like that. Cool. Um, so that's our final code for that bit. That should work and get rid of that error for us. Because what's happening is it's first checking if we're holding a block, which if we're not then, or if we're not holding anything, it's going to give us an error saying null reference exception. Whereas we only want to check that if we actually place a block. Um, so let's... Firstly, let's check this out, make sure this works again. Um, we should hopefully be able to open our inventory and check our offset for that as well. Okay, yeah, so the offset uh, is completely off <laughs> for our inventory. So I'm going to fix all this up, the offsets, and then I'll show you guys the values. All right, guys, so I'm back, and these are the values which seem to have worked. It looks all right. Look, um, I'll mess around with these a little bit more, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to. And why is this lagging so much? I don't know. Um, anyway. So, yep, hotbar is generating fine. Obviously, we do have to do the update UI function for this now so that we can fix these errors. Um, and then inventory generating fine. If you want to see what the values are, they're right here. Um, and now with that done, I'm just going to go to overrides, say apply all, clear our console. Um, and then let's open up our script and write the code to update our UI. So that is in our inventory script right here. So update hotbar. That's going to be the exact same thing as update inventory, control C, and then control V. Let's get rid of our Y, and then let's get rid of this bracket down here. So let's see, shall we? Um, this should be there. Okay, so with this done, you'll see that X and 0, uh, X and obviously Y doesn't exist, right? So we're getting the child and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. We're going to update this again, remember, to hotbar slots. Is it UI or hotbar slots? I think it's hotbar slots. Yes. Uh, and then get rid of Y for all of these. Inventory slot. Uh, maybe hotbar UI slots. That's the one. I think. Yes. Hotbar UI slots. Okay, cool. So just replace all the UI slots with that. Uh, by Control C and Control V. And then we can get rid of Y for all of these uh, because we're only dealing with one dimensional arrays now uh, for the hopper. Keep X because we need that. <laughs> uh, save that. Cool. Uh, and we can get rid of this one as well. So if inventory slots X and zero. So we are going to, obviously our hopper is going to be the first row of our inventory, which is zero, I think. Or is it? No, it will be inventory height minus one will be the top row. Um, and then we just want to say if hotbar slots x, y dot transfer equals this, dot sprite equals null, um, and then otherwise equals zero, yes, and then update that as well. Y doesn't exist here either, so Y should actually be inventory height minus one here as well, because we're getting the last slot in our inventory, and we're just applying that to our hotbar. Um, you'll see what I mean once we test this, so just copy that code there. Let me zoom out so you can see it. Um, and what this basically does, it loops through the first slot of our inventory, uh, the first row, sorry, uh, first row of slots in our inventory, so the one up here, 
and then it just copies the interface from that, pastes it into our hotbar. It's a bit confusing, um, and I'm not very good at explaining, <laughs> but once it works, uh, you'll see that it is pretty damn cool. Okay, so we've loaded in. You can see that our pickaxe appears up here. We open our inventory, our pickaxe is here as well, which means if we break a block, it will appear in our hotbar. Just like that. It's very nice. Now, we can't actually choose anything in our hotbar at the moment, so that's the other thing we're going to implement right now. We're going to create a little frame which just travels between our hotbar, um, choosing the selected object. So, to do that, we are going to make use of this panel a little bit. Uh, issue is right, we don't actually know exactly where our hopper is, the slot in our hopper is going to be placed. So that's a little bit of a problem. It is so cold here in my room at the moment, in the middle of winter, and I can see my breath in my room. So panel, we don't actually... Sorry, I don't even know what I said about the panel two minutes ago. Completely brain frozen. Um, okay, okay, okay. Here's what I'll do. A um, couple of things to fix really quick, uh, which I didn't notice, is down here. So we're instantiating this, this, this. It should be hotbarui.transform.getchild. So I know I got rid of this earlier, but it seemed to pose a problem. So it just adds dot get child dot transform again here um, because it seems to me to be making an issue which means our uh, offset and whatnot for the hopper is going to be off again <laughs> so we're going to fix that up really quick ah right yes enable it please here we go so our first slot is obviously going to be way off yes um let's do this if i just say panel set active that we can actually make this invisible completely but this is just shows that our slots are going to start generating inside this rectangle, which is very handy. We just want to change the offset up here. Hopper offset, let's make this zero and zero because it should generate just in that box. Let's see if my calculations are correct. Um, so you can see now they generate here, uh, which is slightly off, but it's actually not because the center is generating there. So now we just have to set it up so that it's off by that. Um, and again, like I said, I'll explain now why that is important. It's because if our screen, our aspect ratio is different, with our old method, the hotbar would eventually disappear. Having them generate underneath that panel means no matter which aspect ratio we use, they are always relative to the screen, they are in the same position, um, which is exactly how we want it. So now let's just fix up that offset a tiny little bit um, under here. We wanna say probably depend on the size of our slot. So the size of our slot, I think was 60 by 60 uh, or something around that. Oh, no, it would be 40 by 40, I think. Um, also looking at our multiplier. So let's say, for example, minus 20, and then this should actually be 20 and then Y minus 20. And that should theoretically put us in a nice position on our screen. There we go. What I kind of want to do is to create a frame object which travels from position to position. Um, which might even be a better way to do it because it gave, gives you guys a little bit more customizability as to how you want your frame to look. So let's set up the frame for now uh, really quick. So we'll drag and drop our slot into our screen. Make sure it's underneath a panel, uh, sorry, a canvas, otherwise it won't show up. Um, that is very zoomed in. <laughs> Alright, so to create our slots. What I'm going to do is firstly duplicate it, then open it up. We don't need anything underneath it. Delete those. Before you do that, actually, we do have to right click our slot and say prefab. Yes. Okay. Uh, unpack completely. That's the one. All right. Yeah. So just select it, right click, and then it will come up as a prompt prefab. And then just do unpack completely, just so you don't destroy the prefab, of course. And then remove its children game objects, get rid of this, and I'm just going to name this selector or something along those lines. I can't spell. How did I manage that? Selector. There we go. <laughs> um, so our selector object at the moment is just this plain panel here, um, which is not very nice. So let's see if we can find a nice image for this. Let's make this white and then full alpha. And let's come up with a nice image we can use for our um, thingy. I haven't designed any graphics for this, so I'm just going to look for something that's relatively nice. Uh, maybe we might just use glass. 
yeah, so I'll just, um, for now, I'm just going to use this glass um, picture. You guys can use whatever you want, though. Um, and then selector, of course, width and height should be slightly bigger than the slot. So I might do 45 by 45. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, cool. And then you want to make a prefab out of your selector, I think. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. Just have your selector underneath your panel game object. And then you can delete your slot. So that's what our selector looks like on our screen. Nice and easy. So then, our player controller should actually have a reference to that selector. Let's just put that in the top of our um, window for now. So let's have public, game object, hotbar selector, like that. And we're going to use a scroll wheel for that, obviously. But we're going to firstly uh, have a value. So we need a public int selected slot index and then that's going to equal zero initially obviously uh, we can make this private but just with uh, testing i will want to see it in the inspector so in our update function what we want to do is have a if if input dot get axis can't remember what this was called but i think it is spelled like this mouse scroll wheel wheel like that or is it there's a space i think uh we can check this from our input settings later but i believe it's mouse scroll wheel like this so if that is greater than zero it means we're i think scrolling up or other way around um but i can't really remember so i'm gonna double check that soon uh there we go and then make this sure this is less and Obviously, this one is going to be scroll down. And then here, we just want to say selected. If selected slot index is greater than uh, zero, then we want to say selected slot index uh, greater than, less than, sorry, less than inventory dot width dot inventory width, I think. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> if it's less than the max number, we can have our in our inventory with minus one. Never mind, minus one, I think, minus one. Yes, um, plus equals one. Yes, yes, okay. And then duplicate that line and then do this. I'm not very confident with mouse scroll wheels, it's been a while since I've used them. I won't lie, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then this will be minus equals one, something along those lines. Uh, we shall double test, double check this right now. We'll test it. Let's head into Unity. So we're saying mouse scroll wheel like that. Let's double check our input settings before we test this just to make sure we set that up correctly. So that's under edit project settings and then go to the input manager tab. Uh, we don't need to worry about jump. Mouse scroll wheel. Yes, we have confirmed that we have spelled it correctly. So then click on your player root object. Um, and our inventory width is 9, which means our selected slot index will start at 0, and we should be able to scroll all the way up to 9, and then scroll down to 0, and it shouldn't go beyond those values. Um, but let's check, and our direction of scrolling should also uh, be correct. If we scroll up, we go up to 9, we go up to 8, okay, and scroll down, we stay at 0. Okay, so that works, we just have to get rid of the minus 1, okay. That is fine. Super C, easy to do. Okay. And then in our update function, we want to say selected slot selector, I think. Hotbar selector, yes. Dot transform dot position equals inventory dot hotbar UI slots. And then the value we're going to get is. Actually, you know what? No, that was right. This inventory with minus one is correct because we start counting at zero. Yes. So then inventory. So, uh, okay. So inventory dot hopper slots, hopper UI slots, and the index we're gonna get is selected slot index um, dot transform dot position, and that should theoretically work. Unassigned reference. Yes, that is correct. We have not set that up. Um, let's drag and drop our hopper selector there. Um, and then we can clear our console. Uh, that will be fine. I am still concerned whether this selector should be part of the panel or not. 
I might do it like this. I'll put it underneath the panel because you need the panel to be the first child as well. Don't forget that. Um, our code depends on that. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see, now we have a selector which can scroll between our hopper and choose it. My one obviously doesn't look that nice because it's literally just the glass tile sprite. <laughs> but I was not bothered. I, at least I wasn't prepared to uh, create a, you know, image for that. So for your project, obviously create a nice image for that or just use the tiles. That, look, it does the trick, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, you open your inventory, obviously, we can select it there. And then our selected tile as well. So in our player root, at the moment, we're not setting a selected tile. Uh, we don't have it here, um, which is a problem because we need to set that up. Uh, but we will do that in the next episode. So again, today was just doing the fake functionality and whatnot. And next episode is going to be doing all that. Okay, that said, that's the end of this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.